thank you, Tavish, for that thoughtful introduction and for everything that you have done for me and the school both this year and next. I would also like to thank all of the teachers, administrators, and other faculty members, as well as family and friends who have supported us throughout our lives and who will continue to support us as we take our next steps. When I was informed that I would have to be speaking at graduation, I felt uncertain. I had no idea what to write about and how I could summarize a lifetime of memories in a five-minute speech. I don't think I can, but I'll try my best. If I had to sum up the past 13 years of my life at Pulaski Academy in one word, it would be this, community. I know that word may hold a different meaning for many of us who went through a class with a similar title the past few years. <laughs> However, I think it's applicable here. A community is a group of people that you can always count on to help you and give you a shoulder to lean on when you're in need. A community is something like what we have in our grade. A small number of people who have been through many things that together and come out on the other side stronger and more closely than ever. My mom asked me a week ago, are you happy that we sent you to PA? And I was taken aback because why wouldn't I be? My memories of PA are filled with lunches in the cafeteria and in teacher's rooms, laughter that brings tears to my eyes, and of course, an inordinate amount of work. But even throughout the projects, papers, and presentations, I always had support from my friends and family, whether it was staying up until 3 a.m. to make sure an MHD project was perfect for competition, or going to a coffee shop to edit papers. There were always people I could count on to support me and help me. I'd like to share with you all a small memory I have from our actual community class last semester. We were in the middle of finals week and everyone was on edge. A few classmates of mine were lying on the tables in Tavish's room. One was spinning aimlessly in circles. <laughs> After a few minutes of silence in which most of us were either looking at our phones, staring out the window, or taking a much needed nap, Rhett finally said what was on everyone's minds. He stated, Rome is burning, Mr. Topic. Rome is burning. The end is near. <laughs> His statement was met with laughter, and I couldn't help but agree. It seemed that that week, every problem was coming to a boiling point. But despite the anxiety I felt coming to school, community became one of my favorite places to be. It's, I, it was a place to relax, to lay on a table, or spin aimlessly in circles, and just be for a little bit. It was a place to exist without having to focus on the demands of schoolwork. And it was a place where I could release my frustrations and find support in a group of people with whom I could relate. Our grade has been through a lot in the past few years, from shifts in finals week, a pandemic, a tornado, and several other changes that left many of us wondering what would happen next. We never faltered in our support for one another. That's one of the reasons I think teachers love our grades so much. No matter what, we are always there for each other. That's what a community is, and that's what PA means to me. During the challenging moments in which stress uh, puts, is put on the community, and I think it's safe to say that many of us were under a lot of stress this year, a community can tend to drift apart. Despite this, we were able to take the adversity we faced and made our community stronger than ever. So as we all go on to college, leave this place behind, make new friends, and go through more life-altering changes, let's not forget what we built here. We will always be there for each other. This community will not dissipate once we all move away to bigger and better things. So whenever you get stressed or anxious in college, never forget that you always have a group of people that will do anything for you, and we will always have a shoulder to lean on. Thank you. Intellectual talents 
had been celebrated by such honors as the national three-day national finalist, John F. Kennedy Profiles and Courage SA National Semifinalist, American Foreign Service Association National SA Winner, the Clinton SA Winner, and the Stevens Award. Her senior honors thesis was entitled, The Weaponization of Life, an Analysis of Martyrdom, Hunger Strikes, and Self-Immolation. This deeply provocative 149-page project included perspectives from numerous academic fields, including psychology, political science, and philosophy. She has been named the United States Presidential Scholar and a National Merit Scholar, two very prestigious national awards for academic excellence. Throughout the last four years, Miriam has also distinguished herself as a leader in multiple realms outside of the classroom, as Model UN co-president, band council president, quiz bowl team co-captain, and lacrosse team captain. Miriam is a disciplined, discerning, determined, and dependable young woman. She will be attending the University of Virginia as a Jefferson Scholar to pursue a career in either medicine or law. Please welcome your class valedictorian, Miriam Miriam. introduction, but also as guidance over the past four years, I would not be standing up here today, nor would I be as confident in myself if it were not for him, and for that, I'm forever grateful. I would also like to begin by expressing my gratitude for all of my teachers at PA who have been fundamental to my growth over the past eight years. And finally, I would like to thank my family, in addition to my classmates, for making the past few years the best of my life. It was seven years ago when we sat in Ms. Bonell's class and wrote letters to our future selves. Like many of you opening your letters in the past few weeks, it was exciting to see who I was back then and what I had predicted for our world. As a bonus, I also had a letter from last summer and a note from six months ago that I had written for myself. When I read all these things on signing day, I was presented with three strikingly different views of where I would be as a graduating senior. My fifth grade self was confident that I would still hold the same dreams and want to become a doctor. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> Meanwhile, my letter from last summer mostly strayed away from making predictions about the future, instead trying to reassure my future self I would be okay no matter what. But it was my final brief note to myself that I think best represents the stress many of us shared about our futures in the past year. It literally reads, Dear Miriam, where are you? Because I don't know where you are. I don't. <laughs> if anything, this progression from my confident yet incorrect fifth grade self to my doubts as a senior in November does not indicate a lost sense of direction, but rather represents the unexpected changes in ourselves and the world around us. Our fifth grade selves probably would have never predicted a pandemic, countless mid-year school changes, or a tornado. No doubt this class would be intelligent, artistic, athletic, and selfless regardless of what we endured. But it's worth considering that if we never lost a football state championship, maybe we wouldn't have worked even harder to ensure a 4 peak. And if we never had to wear masks and social distance, maybe we would not fully appreciate seeing each other's smiles and the value of performing together as a band or in theater. If we never had a pandemic or tornado, maybe our values of service and community would not be as strong as they are today. We all have a vision for the future, where we want to be after college or in 10 years. But like the changes from our fifth grade selves to our senior year, as we get closer to a new stage of life, the simplicity of our younger selves is replaced by a newfound sense of wisdom or changed desires that redirect our course. Our plans for the far future never include the unexpected hurdles or changes, whether it be a change in our environment or a change in our heart. Yet these are 